or anything that might hinder his aggressiveness. So, Sparks is going to have to adapt to that. He's going to have to get to uh, inside, be accurate with his punches, like down with the one, two, and the one, two, three. He must continue to put the hook at the end of the combination. Ratsaka was very clear. State tonight. See, but he also has two options, and most fighters I know, yeah. we go to Making no, no, no. a conscious effort to move a lot more and not be there to be hit because that is part of the scars issue. But he had sutures. What he said, and they you know, said it to both of us, but from the break out of that. <laughs> yeah, he says, I don't go in there wanting a fight of the year, just break through the wall. That's what he's trying to do, and someone who's trying to break through the wall here, it was a feeling after the first round, Beto. Calmado, Bernie, calmado, be calm. That's what they, end up the glove, where the, where the stitch. Expectations to be up. It is definitely is, and also, you know, Saka, I'm watching him. He's not a hard puncher, but he's a sharp puncher. And when you're dealing with Vargas with cuts. To us, the fact that that was part of the plan, because he's cut other fighters up here, and he says, you know, if, if I land the right type of punch, I go, it's very much on his mind, but Bandito is always that, what if he cuts early and how he reacts. But Vargas will want to get him early. If he can, he cuts. Rod Saka learned the trade from Paul Spatafora, the Pittsburgh kid from Bandido Vargas. Whether they speak Saka in his corner or not. At least for three minutes uh, of every round, you have one. Sometimes it's not the advice, it's the motivation, the fact that you don't feel so alone in here in India, California. I'm Bernardo Osuna, Beto Duran giving us from the corners. And now you see the pressure of Vargas starting to build on Saka behind. Great instructions because he's setting down on the punches and look what Saka had, he's on the ropes. He's waiting to get hit with some... And try to buy him some time, but he's getting punished in the ring. Now and then, every now and then, Saka has his moments where he goes from respect that because the power is not there. I mean, we knew this was going to be a power punch battle because that's Bandido Vargas' style. But when you look at Rod Saka, he's only landed two of 89 jabs thrown until this point of the fight. That's why Beto was mentioning the disappointment in the corner in terms of establishing distance, establishing the range. And here, he sits on his punches and catches Bandido Vargas coming in and stops him in his tracks. But he, can he continue? Can he continue? Which he have not Bernard. He stopped. He threw those five, six punches. He's trying to get a breather. And right now, he's paying for that. So he shot his load, and now he's getting pummeled. Ring. Oh, he got hit with a right uppercut. That's a right uppercut that drops. Rod Salka, it came after a low blow. Well, that's because Vargas haven't really set him up like he's supposed to. When he do get him in, in trouble, he throw punches like this with combinations like that. He must shorten the punches up, not be too wide, and he must look for the right target. Now stalking him in round, showing a lot of heart, and Vargas just doing what he does. Freddie Roach named him El Bandido because he stole from his fighters in the gym. And now... Out of Mexico City, who comes back to Fantasy Springs, a place where he lost his title to get back on track.